what was the turning point for the two, two day match what do you think about that uh, I think probably being 46 for 4 I think was a, a pretty significant moment in the game I think um, any time obviously you get the new ball moving um, Pakistan's bowling in it's obviously really impressive um, so yeah to, to sort of try and dig ourselves out of that hole took a lot of doing but I think we potentially got to a score that was defendable but um, obviously the way uh, Baba Azam and Harris are hell battered uh, didn't allow us to I suppose get some momentum and um, try and get into their middle order in Dashiga Channel 5, uh, still you hope to go in the final? Semi final? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. Sorry. I, I think you'd be pretty naive to expect to go through the whole tournament. I think there's too many quality teams going around to, to expect to win every game. And um, we prepared before the tournament that we would probably lose one or two games. But um, for us, it's all about making it to those semi finals. And then you're only two good games away from, from lifting the trophy. So for us, it, nothing changes. We'll prepare for the next game the same way we've prepared for the last six. Uh, Jimmy, do you feel the team? Do you feel the team missed, missed the trick by not playing East Sodi today? Uh, I look, it turned. I think um, we can only obviously work on what we're told leading into the game, and um, we probably selected the team based on the information we had. But um, look, I think in hindsight, it's easy to say an extra spinner would have been useful. But I think with the bowlers we had, the quality we had at the bowling crease, would it was enough to defend that total? And unfortunately, it just didn't fall our way today. Yeah. Uh, there's a new uh, new left arm fast bowler in Pakistan, Shaheen Shah. Uh, how difficult was it to face him when the ball was moving around? Um, yeah, he's obviously a quality bowler, I think. Um, he had a really good under-19 World Cup um, not too long ago, and, and he's sort of kept taking good strides in the in the national team. And um, I think uh, it's facing him is quite similar to facing Mustafa Zif from Bangladesh, the way his slow ball actually bounces at you, and I think... Um, on a deck like that today, obviously, sort of style of bowling well, and, and he put us under a lot of pressure. Um, um, today's match is looking like uh, an episode of toss winning. The team who has won the toss, um, they have lost the match. So, do you think uh, it's uh, the role of the toss today also? Well, the team that loses the toss wins, it's probably pretty good for us. I don't think we've had a very good record for the toss over the last couple of years, but. Um, look, I don't even tend to watch the toss, to be fair, in the morning. I, I prepare for doing whatever we're doing. Um, as an all-rounder, you're, you're generally in the game um, either way. So for me, it's all about preparing the best I can in the morning and, and doing whatever we're doing. Um, there, were, there was a lot of talk about uh, barbarism not having fulfilled his potential. Um, were you wary of him, I mean, you know, before his coming out to the crease? Um, were you thinking that this could have been his day? What is the average in ODI cricket? What is what? His, what of course, his is very high, but as in, in this tournament I'm talking about. Yeah. Ah, this tournament. Yeah. Um, look, I think in, in such a small sample size, uh, you'd be naive to expect good players to score runs at every game. And uh, We know the quality they have in their batting lineup, and, and it's only a matter of time when you've got players of that quality before they do score runs. So um, we've potentially got a few guys like that in our lineup at the moment who externally have a bit of pressure on them but internally in our team we believe in their ability and um, the nature of the game is that you're going to have land trots here and there but it's all about the quality of the player. Um, obviously you, you and De Gronon pulled the innings around for New Zealand there. Was it tough to judge exactly when to go big because obviously over the last four overs you did really go big but what was the chat there in terms of deciding when to really tee off? Um, we, we targeted the 43rd uh, when we came together I think um, when you look at the quality of death bowling that Pakistan have, um, you really want to try and avoid exposing your tail to, to coming out and having to start against especially reverse swing. And, um, yeah, so we, we knew our death phase wouldn't be as long as it potentially would be if we had more wickets in the tank, but um, we still believe that with the power we have that we could still make hay um, in those last seven overs. And I think 85 off the last 10, um, which I think we would have taken um, five down going in. Uh, Jimmy, uh, despite the fact that New Zealand lost the game, but you said two marks. 97 not out the highest score at number six batting and 132 is the highest partnership at, for the second wicket. How do you feel about it? Um, oh, it's something I'll probably reflect on after the tournament's finished, I think. Um, obviously, the, the whole point of, of trying to graft out a partnership like that is to try and get yourselves in a position to win the game. and. Um, I feel like we potentially did that. We potentially had a score that was defendable, but um, obviously in a game where you lose, you don't take a whole lot of pleasure out of stuff like that. 
did the hi, did the pitch play you expected you on the toss you batted did it play as you expected and generally are the pitches in this world Cup different from the ones you've been playing on in between you know, for the tournament um i don't really expect anything going to play on any pitch i think um that's all about i suppose being a number six batsman is, is your adaptability and um, I think the, the beauty of it is that you do get to see four or five guys try and have a bet on it before you go out and have to do it yourself. So um, it obviously looked pretty difficult um, for the guys at the top of the order. So for me it was all about um, trying to obviously generate a partnership, um, trying to absorb some of that pressure and then get to the back end of the game where you can try and, I suppose, put that pressure back on the bowlers. And um, Potentially the, the wicket was not as good as we were told it was going to be, but um, you just got to deal with that. Um, uh, Jimmy, can you just tell us about, uh, there's a phase in that uh, second innings where you guy, you had it in, under control in about 15, 16 runs were scored over five overs, and then Colin Munro came over to bowl that one over, and then you had about 17 runs scored the next seven, eight balls. Uh, would you be able to tell us what was the thought behind that, and if that's where the game sort of ran away? Um, well, I was a deep backward square leg, so I can't tell you the, the thinking that was going through, but... Um, obviously the, the wicket was, was slow, it was tough to time slower bowlers and um, Manas has the ability to bowl sort of knuckle balls and slower balls wicket to wicket so I could see how that would be quite a challenging style of bowler to face but I think the nature of having a, a total of that amount on the board is that you will have periods where you're building pressure but it's a case of is there going to be a wicket or is there going to be a release of pressure because it's not going to go on forever so um, we obviously saw a, a chance to, to get a wicket in that period. It, it didn't happen, but I, I don't know what we'd do in hindsight. Jimmy, um, what do you say to Martin and Colin at the top of the order at the moment? Because they do seem to be going through quite a tough patch. Uh, I don't say anything to them, I think. Um, look, they're quality players. They both play very differently to how I play. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of knowledge when it comes to opening the batting. I've done it very rarely. Um, so I think they're quality players. Guys go through lean trots. It's the nature of the game. And I think um, we'll have a lot of, I suppose, time to, to work hard preparing for the next game. And we'll prepare the same way we do for every other game. And uh, we're basically in a situation now where it's one win from two. Um, and we'll be in the semi-finals, which is obviously our goal at the start of the tournament. Jimmy, um, I, knew you, I know you've said that you'd rather score a five in, in a winning cause than 90 in a losing cause. But just for this innings, the length of the innings, it's, you batted through almost through the innings, saw the team through the crisis and gave yourself a total that you could fight with. That must be pleasing. Is oh, I'm pretty tired now. That's my, my sort of emotions at the moment, I think. Um, yeah, obviously, you, I suppose there's external noise about whether you have the ability to, to guide, a, I suppose, in innings like that. And um, I sort of have belief in my own ability that I have the ability to come out at 40 for 4 and, and guide a team to, to 200 plus and, and also the ability to come out at um, 310 for 3 with 2 overs to go. So um, it's just about putting it out there I suppose and, and having belief in your own processes and obviously we had a, a large period of time where we had to soak up pressure that, that was the nature of the wicket and the nature of the bowling attack but um, we certainly had belief that we could get through that hard period then we'd be able to score some runs to the back end which is what ended up happening. Jimmy, just uh, next match, obviously a big, big derby against Australia. How do you go about shaking this off and um, preparing for Mitchell Stark and company steaming in the mood? Uh, well, I mean, the mood in the dressing room is good. The guys were joking and laughing when I left. We don't, we're not the type of team that takes losses really hard. I think um, we'll have a couple of beers tonight as a team and and kind of talk about how that game went, and and then we'll pretty much pack it and and we'll hit our scouting tomorrow morning, um, pretty fresh. And, Australia are a team that we've played a lot of over the last two or three years. We know how they go about the game. They're obviously a very good team, um, but we certainly won't prepare any differently for them as we would any other game. Uh, Jim, um, you've got a nice easy run in against Australia and England. Would it be fair to say that um, you're in a better position than England at the moment to qualify for the semi-finals? Would you rather be in your position than this? Well, we have more points. <laughs> I think that's probably what you want in a, in a league scenario, I think. Um, look, as I mentioned before, we don't spend any time paying any attention to how other teams are going or, or how they prepare. I think for us it's all about looking after our own backyard. And we've obviously been playing really good cricket over the tournament so far. Today was a bit of a blip, 
but that certainly won't change the way we prepare for the last two games.